Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I've been asked just to share a few thoughts um, on Ramadan and and this idea that um, you know kind of a preparation, but preparation in a way that that perhaps excites us. And I think um, in starting off for this Ramadan, this is special. Uh, every Ramadan is special, no doubt. But I would say for me um, that this is something special in particular because this Ramadan for me now marks um, two, two lives, if you will. So I became Muslim when I was 26, and now this year becomes my 26th Ramadan. So I have half of my life as a non-Muslim and half of my life now as a Muslim. And I say that because I want to share with you that in, in this month, you know, we perhaps, Shaytan tries this kind of like one last assault to create doubt. Right? If he can't get us not to fast, he's going to get us to have, he's going to try and work on us to have doubt. That's his game. And I think about, you know, what life was like, you know, kind of right up to that first time that you fast. And whatever doubts that a person may have, uh, you can say with absolute sincerity, I'm sorry, with absolute yaqeen, that whatever you think you can't do with the intention, Allah will see you through it. Like whatever you think you can't do, that Allah will see you through that. And as I think about this month, I want to share with you just some thoughts um, of some notes that I wrote um, some time ago, but I think that they are appropriate. And I think about this month, it's as if we are hosting a most unique, most honored, and most generous guest. And it's a guest that we are blessed to host once a year for the duration of a month. The guest arrives at a point at an appointed time, and departs at an appointed time. And the beauty of this guest is that it brings the most sought-after gifts for the spiritual aspirant, right? If we are aspiring in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this guest brings the most sought-after gifts. It brings God's mercy and generosity and disperses it to those who avail themselves to it like no other time of the year. It brings us deeds that draw us nearer to our Lord and His pleasure in His garden like no other time in the year. It distances us from the hellfire and protects us from shaitan and his waswas like no other time in the year. It brings with the fragrance of the garden. It brings life to our hearts with the, eter with the eternal speech of the ever-living creator, uh, creator of the Qur'an, obviously, we're talking about here. And that fills our homes with families, friends, and loved ones. And I think about this one um, aspect here in terms of, in terms of um, protects us from shaitan and his misgivings. Because what we find in this game is that shaitan will tell us something or whisper something to us. And either we're going to listen to it or we're not. And that's the game. And normally what we have learned from our scholars and from what we understand from our tradition is that shaitan will normally just kind of put something forward to you once and if you don't respond to it, he'll move on to something else. But the nafs, the nafs will continue to kind of pull, push you towards that thing or pull you towards that thing. And so we think about Ramadan as I said in this kind of uh, protection from shaitan, the beautiful hadith Right? فُتِحَ الْأَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأُغْلَقَ الْأَبْوَابُ الْجَحَنَّمِ وَصُسِلَ الْشَيَاطِينِ Like what a gift that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah says 
that the that at Ramadan the the that the doors of Jannah are flung open, and the doors of Jahannam are locked, and the shayateen are chained. And so our teachers taught taught us that all that is good will be pouring out from heaven. And that's a gift of this month. And all energy, if you will, this is a term that we will use in this way just for the description of this, of negativity or any type of, um, ne we'll just call it a negative aspect, which uh, the doors of Jahannam, uh, they are closed. And the those types of whisperings from shaitan are closed off. And it says that all of this is to aid one to not be distracted in the month. And I just thought that is just so incredible. Right? Like everything is multiplied in this month of the actions that we're doing. And then I'm going to make it easier for you to even do it in this month. And so I think about this in terms of, of a gift, right? So this guest is Ramadan, the month of Quran, the month of Layatul Qadr, the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month of liberation from the hellfire, right? The month of patience, the month of reflection, the month of reflection and renewed spiritual commitment, the month of charity for the under-resourced and solidarity with the underserved, the month when the deeds are multiplied, the month of the pre-dawn meals of, of suhoor, and the month of qiyam and tarawih. And I just think to myself, like, you know, when, when we are um, um, having a relationship with this guest, um, I'm reminded of the tradition, the one who believes in Allah, man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir, man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir, fa yukrim jaruhu. That the one who believes in Allah in, his last, in the last day, last day, then let him honor his neighbor. Wa man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir, fa yukrim jaruhu. Um, and um, so, um, and then also in another uh, um, uh, meaning as well too. Then let him honor his guest, right? Right? Let him honor um, his guest. So here, um, the question is, how yeah, are we upholding our obligation and honoring our guests of Ramadan? That's the question that I want us to ask, right? Like, if we know that a guest is coming, what preparations do we make? Make sure everything is in order. We might even hire somebody to clean the house and take care of all of these things and all these affairs. Now we have this month coming, and we have this house right here. How do we clean this house, and how do we prepare this house for this guest that is coming? So alhamdulillah, as we think about this month, to think about it, you know, in that way, and as, mashallah, our sister... Uh, um, Hussein mentioned here um, that there is emotional intelligence uh, that is required. Um, you know, I think that there are some practical things as well too, and just in terms of our spiritual um, intelligence that we want to um, think about. One of the things that I was just reading with our students, we've been reading for the past couple of weeks on campus after Zohar each day, We've been reading The Etiquettes of Fasting by Imam Ghazali and his book, al Bidayat Al-Hidayat, The Beginning of Guidance. And one of the things that he said was, um, like, he said, do not approach the, the eating and the meal as if you want to make up for the food that was lost and not eaten do, throughout the day. He said, because that is the absolute opposite of what the goal and the intention of the month is. Because the whole idea of the month is to um, lessen one's desires. And now, maybe this is going to anger some people, maybe it won't. However, I say that because I give this advice that perhaps we look to simplify our meals during this month. Look to simplify our meals during this month. Why? Because meals take time. Meal, te meal prep takes time. Shopping takes time. And all of that time, yes, we, are, uh, we want to have a good meal, we want to have that, but just for these 30 days, just for these 30 days, the best 30 days throughout the year, look and see if we can approach this Ramadan with a different type of approach to our food. One that is just 
sim simple. Now I'll share this with you again. Uh, I don't say in any way to, 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 to say anything other than I just wanted to test to see what this was like. I spent my first 10 days of last Ramadan only on dates in water. 21. 7 at Suhoor, 7 at Iftar, and 7 after Tarawih. And I drank water. And I'm still here. Alhamdulillah, from the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to barakallah, not to boast, but to show you what Allah can do, I wanted to go the 30 days, but I felt bad for my family. Because I wasn't joining them in meals. But just because I wanted to say two things I wanted to say. What was the meaning of Aswadain? As we hear in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, lived on dates and water for three months. In the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. Right? So if he can do for three months, can we do 30 days? Now I'm not saying everyone should have dates and water for the entire month. We could try and roast them. We can put them in a curry. We can do <laughs> different things. I'm just teasing. But what I'm saying is that it showed me what the possible, and the, my schedule didn't change. It's doing all of the things that I had to do. Why? Because then you also understand that with this is like a this is a means. But the real the reality of all things is Allah's tawfiq in this. Because we can eat a king's meal and not be satiated. Or we can have dates and water and get up, have our day, be with our family, be in tarawih, and do all of the other things that we need to do. So in this preparation, maybe in this month, spiritually, we look to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone of what we've been. Now, Ramadan does that, no doubt. We have to get up at times that we normally don't get up. We have to, you know, uh, uh, be without uh, food and water for times um, that we normally don't. And so within it, um, within it itself, right, Ramadan has the, the, the ability to do that. But let's think about perhaps other things that we're doing that we can begin to eliminate. Because um, as I said, uh, before, and, and I'll share this again, is that, is that as we look at Ramadan, and we look at other aspects of the deen, and Ramadan falls into this category, that Ramadan is proximity to God, it's gaining nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through subtraction. Right? Through subtraction. So if we look for multiple places within our lives of where we can subtract, let's see what this Ramadan will look like. And that we pray, mashallah, that this is, you know, one of the, the if not the greatest Ramadan that we've had. That's not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate that. Right? And then one of the things that I'll just end with here, and, 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 and I, 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 I kind of, I feel like I always like to share this, is that we, we, we really become people when Allah says that we really look at this ayah and we really look to, 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 to um, um, what can I say, that we really look to live with this verse of Quran. Allah says, you know, what Allah says in Quran, um, Ya bin Ya Adam, um, uh, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنِّكُوا لِمَشْرِ وَكُلُوا وَشْرِبُوا وَلَا تُصْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُصْرِفِينَ that, O oh, children of Adam, adorn yourselves, adorn yourselves um, when you enter into the places of worship, and eat and drink, and do not waste, for he does not love those who waste. And so think about food or other things in this month. Think about this, that maybe I take a few sips of this at Iftar, and I set it down, and I walk away. Where is it? What's left inside of the bottle? doesn't matter to me. There's another bottle right there on the counter. I'll just grab another one. Right? So think about this now. That would be considered waste. And I just spent my entire day, got up for tahajjud, prayed, um, had suhoor, made dua, uh, fasted, made my intention, fasted, read Quran, gave charity, made dhikr, visited the sick, attended a janazah, did all of these things that could be possible in one day in Ramadan. Broke my fast, made dua, a dua is mustajab, the, 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 the prayer is accepted. But then, at the time of my meal, I will load my plate up, not eat all of the food, and then throw food away. And Allah just says in Quran that He does not love. So I go through the entire day in a state in which He is pouring out His love. 
because of all of the actions that we did, only to flip it into that side and be in a category that he describes with his own words of saying that he doesn't love those who waste. So maybe let's try to make a promise to ourselves, to Allah, to our community, to our akhirah, to whatever it is, that we look with intentionality that any type of, any morsel of food will not, will be consumed by us. Okay? Now there's one dispensation that I allow, which is if someone else makes you a plate of food. And that is because people, I feel, they misappropriate the sunnah. And they say the Prophet ﷺ was generous, so they'll load food and food and food and food and one more scoop and one more scoop and one more scoop onto your plate. And you're looking at it, you're like, I couldn't eat that between now and Tuesday. And then I'm supposed to go pray tarawih and have presence with that, right? And so if that is the case, maybe we can eat a portion of it. Maybe we eat a portion of it after tarawih. I don't know, but I'm just saying that we really look. You get my point, right? We're trying not to, um, you know, um, we're trying to, to, to remove this Cognitive dissonance to say Alhamdulillah at'amana wa saqana wa ja'ana min al-Muslimin make dua and then throw food into the garbage. Right? So this is a challenge that I put out to myself and I put out to all of us here who are present. And inshallah we can pass it on to those who are absent as well too. That this is part of our spiritual preparation, right? That we will that we will commit ourselves to not be people who waste um, um, in this month, and inshallah it becomes habituated. And we move forward with that. Bi'idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are just a few a brief thoughts. Alhamdulillah as we prepare for this month. And I think that, you know, Alhamdulillah, Sister Hussein, she read the dua at the end. Allahum barakna fi baqti ilam ayyami wa liyal sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Allah bless us in the remaining days and nights of sha'ban and allow us to experience, I like that, personally I like that translation, allow us to experience Ramadan with all of its gifts, with all of its gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we know of and that we don't know of. All of the gifts that we know and that we don't know facilitated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the most generous. Um, and, and, and in this month, um, um, you know, puts out a generosity and deals with us in a way that is just unimaginable. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to, to, to bless this community and, and its organizers of this community and the members of this community to facilitate um, what it does in aiding people to have a beautiful month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim al-kathir ya rabbil alameen. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.